Hey everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with Josh Ramsey. Hello, how are you doing over there? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing really well. It's been a minute as we were just saying before the camera started rolling. So how's your day been going over there? Just fill me in a little bit. Yeah, I'm great. Just, you know, it, it's really funny um, in, uh, in, in sort of uh, post pandemic world, or I guess it's, there's still the pandemic, but um, it's, uh, it's actually way easier doing press days because you just have to sit by a computer all day. It's way easier. Right? <laughs> it's so simple. If you want to some days, you can keep the sweatpants on. Like it's just such a chill vibe. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, before we dive into the record that's on the horizon, what can you tell me about being a tiny horse enthusiast? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a great question. Um, one time, uh, this is embarrassing. Um, one time I um, I was drunk and I impulse purchased a miniature horse on a website. And wow. uh, yeah, yeah, I did that. Um, and, uh, and I was gonna, I, I lived in a penthouse at the time that had a rooftop deck. And my plan was I was gonna build a tiny paddock on the roof. Makes <laughs> perfect the, sense, right? Right, as, as one does. <laughs> Um, and then I found out that um, you can have tiny horses as pets, but they can't go downstairs. And I lived in okay. like a three, in a three, four place. So <laughs> then I was like, well, I should probably cancel that purchase. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I it was a that. kind of like a dream of yours to one day be able to it, still make that happen. I don't know. It was, it was really a spur of the moment, random, random, stupid decision. <laughs> so glad we got that story and of course yeah other yeah. than loving tiny horses you also love to cook on rock and roll kitchen and some of the I bites do. that you post look so delicious so what would you say are some of your favorite bites that you've made recently oh I don't know thank you um I, I don't know I uh I think um I, I I just you know what it is I when I was getting ready to write the Astoria album, I went through some really, I was really, I went through a really bad depression and I went through this like huge writer's block where I couldn't write. Um, and I, if I'm not doing something creative, I, I'll, I'll explode. Like I need to be making something all the time. So basically what I did while I had this writer's block is I basically threw stuff online. I basically just put myself through culinary school because I needed to learn how to do something. I know it's so That's random. Amazing. That's amazing. Um, um, and, and then when I really discovered a love for it was um, because writing an album can seem like a really daunting thing at the beginning. You can be like, okay, so... I'm fucked for the next year. I'm going to work on this thing for the next year. Whereas if you're just making dinner for someone, even if it's just an afternoon, it's not that long. It's not that That's much of a incredible. commitment. <laughs> so it, it's a great creative outlet for me that doesn't require a whole year of my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it makes perfect sense. And like I said, everything you post just looks so good. You did this crazy crossover where it was like rice with meatballs instead of the traditional. I just, oh, it looked amazing. So uh, you're you. definitely <laughs> doing something, something right over there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> of course. Well, it's also such an exciting time for you and your fans as you'll soon release your debut solo record, The Josh Ramsey Show. So do you still get nervous leading up to releases like this, especially since this is something completely new? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I, um, you know, what's been nerve wracking about this fucking one is, um, the record has been in the can since last summer. It's been done mm -hmm. for so long. So I've had this like, anticipation building in me for like six months it, it's been uh it's been very frustrating actually um and i so now i have this sort of uh it's like finally coming out and um i have this sort of um like nervous night before going back to school feeling yeah okay you know <laughs> It's fun because I love seeing you dive into so many different aspects that we haven't really seen you try before. I know your goal was to try as many genres as possible, and you definitely did that as there's rock and roll, country, <laughs> some dreamy pop anthems, R&B. So were there any genres that surprised you a little bit that maybe were a little daunting? You maybe weren't as big of a fan of them, but as soon as you started, you were in it. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it, it, there was nothing, I, I didn't do anything that I wasn't a fan of, but I okay. did do, I did do stuff. There was stuff that was still challenging just because I hadn't worked in that sector before. Um, the vocal delivery on the country song, Best of Me, took a lot of work because I just, I couldn't find the right voice at first, you know, like, right. like 
Um, like when I first started singing it and using my voice, that's like, feels like home doesn't look right. Truth seems wrong in the right light. And it's sort of airy, like that's how I would yeah. normally sing it. But that doesn't sound like a country singer. So I kind of had to find the voice. And the first couple of the t- things that I tried, I went too far. Like it sounded like I was doing a skit on SNL. Like it was, it was like, a little hokey it too was like, much. Feel, feel like home doesn't look right. You know what I mean? So I kind of had to go a, a lot of back to the drawing board to like find sort of my country voice where it still felt authentic, but st- to me, but still felt like the genre, which was the sort of, which really ended up just turning out, uh, turned out to be, I had to just project when I was singing low because my instinct is always okay. to get breathy when it's low. And so it's just more like, it's more like, feels like home doesn't look right. That's or it's a just good sort of crossover. Like, it's just pretty, yeah, I just kind of had to find it. <laughs> the other, the other one that was a little bit tough just because I had never tried it before is there's one song this EDM and mm-hmm. I had never worked, I had never worked in EDM before. So to get that song, right. Um, I, um, uh, there's a friend of mine named DJ George Toms who lives in Toronto. And, um, I, I sent him like so many versions of the song and I just kept getting notes and feedback from him. And that was really helpful for me too, because I just didn't know what I was doing at first. <laughs> but the awesome part is you kind of know that going into, and you do have all of these different friends that you're able to hit up and get that help. Definitely. From. So uh, it's really, Really cool to see how it turned out and of course speaking to a lot of those friends the record features some amazing talent from Chad Kroger yeah. to Serena Ryder Fifi Dobson so kind of take us behind the scenes on that and just simply calling up a bunch of your friends to be on this milestone album for you that is pretty much what happened I, I basically just called <laughs> I just called people and was like would you would you be willing to do this um one thing I did is uh, whether I don't know if this was the right choice or not but I'm used to, I'm very used to writing songs for other artists. That's something mm-hmm. I do a lot. And so if you're pitching a song, it, my approach has always been, if I'm pitching a song to somebody else, not to just do like a little acoustic demo because then they don't know what you're doing. So usually if I send somebody a song, um, it's like fully produced, finished, radio ready, just with me singing on it. And then I'll send it to them. And that's, I feel like that's the best way to sell a song. So okay. that's the same thing I did here. I, I, I fully finished the songs. Cause I didn't, I didn't want to send something to someone and if I didn't feel like it was the best it could and be. And then be like, wait, what am I singing on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <early> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so each of the songs was sent to people with just me singing the whole thing. And then um, people would, and I didn't really produce anybody else's vocal performances. They just said, they just did it on their own and sent it back to me. Um, but that was a really fun process because then you hear somebody else's interpretation of your song and they make different choices and they do different, and they make it their own as they should. Yeah. And that was always the most exciting thing being like, oh man, I, I got Chad Kruger's vocal today. Let's check out what he did. Oh my God. <laughs> listen, what did Serena Ryder do? This is going to be amazing. So much um, fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, Serena specifically, um, that song, the last chorus, we're both kind of like improvising with each other and just um, our style of improvising is so different from one another that I think it's just so fun to hear the way our voices go back and forth and do completely different things with each other. I, that was a really fun one. It's cool to see how they all turned out too. And I'm really looking forward to everyone else being able to hear the entire thing because knowing going into it, that was the exact process. Like you, you yeah. kind of even didn't know you're going to end up with. It's so no, neat. <laughs> no. Oh, so you actually have heard it. Yeah, yeah, they sent me the whole record. It's so good. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you. Of course. Now, typically you are writing and recording with multiple band members at the same time. So was there a certain freedom in creating a solo record, kind of knowing at the end of the day, the main approval that you needed was your own? That's a really great question. Um, Yeah, um, I think that... It, it was, it had challenges because um, I set out to write, to, to make an album where I played all the instruments myself. And I really, that was a real goal for me. Um, so that had a few challenges because I was a little bit rusty on some instruments. <laughs> so I just had to practice a little. Um, yeah, I was a little rusty on drums and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, I think, um, I, I think it ended up feeling like, um, it did end up feeling a lot more personal just because it was mostly me on my own. So it feels a lot more personal to me. I mean, Mariana's Trent stuff is always personal to me as well, of of course, but there's a different kind of, there's a different kind of attachment I have to this just because I, cause I did it on my own. So there, there's a, it feels like, a, it feels like a real scrapbook of the last sort of year and a half of my life. Oh, I guess. So exciting. <laughs> well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about today, Josh, is on my show, especially since the first time I interviewed you, I also started interviewing wrestlers. So I would love to know. If I know you get, do. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to get in the ring and have a wrestling gimmick, some kind of in-ring persona, what would that be? <laughs> 
Oh, wow. What would be my wrestling? Per- I don't know. I mean, I feel like the like the lead singer of Mariana's Trench already is a persona that I do. Um, oh. That feels like a character for sure. Um, I don't know what my on what my wrestling persona would be. I, I don't know, like a uh, uh, guy that cries and has to run away because he's too scrawny to be in a wrestling ring. I don't know, terrified guy. I mean, that uh, could totally be a gimmick. It's worked yeah, in the past. Guy, guy, just trying not to die. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm way too skinny to be a wrestler. <laughs> I, I, think would, I would, I would, I would watch that. You just scrambling at the end every single yeah, time. I, I would be cagey. I would be very cagey. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, Josh, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time for catching up today. It's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you very much. Yeah, always a pleasure, Alicia. I hope we see each other uh, sooner than another four years. <laughs> yes, fingers crossed. To everyone yeah. watching, this has been Josh Ramsey. Be sure to check out alishatoot.com for plenty more exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.